जी एच एस वन सेवन जीरो जी एच एस वन सेवन जीरो Lord, you are welcome to the Sunday Scripture this morning. We want you to be attentive as we go through the Sunday Scripture. We implore that every one of us 
whether online, whether in home churches, you should concentrate as we study the Word of God this morning. Let's rise up so that we can pray together. Father, we thank you very much for the privilege of life you have given unto us. We know it's not our making that you have brought us here again. We want to feed us. We want to bless us. And that's why we are here. And we pray that the grace of God will be available unto every one of us. And you prepare our heart so that at the end of the day, you would have loaded up with your benefits through the word of God in Jesus' name. As we listen to the word of God, during this searching the scriptures, we pray you will touch every heart that is listening and our lives will not remain the same. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We are welcome to the sad scripture today. Last week, we studied lesson 963. And the topic was conditions for fellowshipping with God. In the study, we discovered that only fools refused, rejected, and rescued themselves from accepting the existence of God by not believing in Him. Such actions lead to damnation in hell because they are full of corruption, pollution, abomination. We must, under no circumstances, never ever fall into such damnation. And the Lord will keep us from falling. Can I hear amen for that? Amen. Today we are studying another lesson. Lesson 964. Can I hear us say so? Lesson 964. And the topic is Petition for Deliverance from Persecutors. Can we say it? Petition for Deliverance from Persecutors. Our memory verse is taken from Psalm 17, in verse 8 and 9. Psalm 17, 8 and 9. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. From the wicked that oppress me, from my deadly enemies, who compass me about. These were the words of David. You know, David was a man that had a lot of troubles in his life. But at the end of the day, the Lord delivered him. And whatever trouble you are having, or you are experiencing, or you are going through, the Lord, by his grace, he will solve the problems for you in Jesus' name. We will study Psalm 16 to 21. And we will read the following passages. We are going to read from all the passages so that we can get the import of the word. In Psalm 16, verse 1 to 6 and 10 to 11. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, Thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord, my goodness, extended not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent, in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied, that hasten after another. Their drink offering of blood will I not offer, nor make up their names into my lips. 
in verse 5. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my court. Thou maintainest my Lord. The Lord will sustain you. And that's what the word of God is saying. In verse 6, the lines are falling upon me into pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. In verse 10, but thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life in thy presence, is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. In chapter 17, in verse 1, 7 to 9, hear the rights, O Lord. Attend unto my cry. Give ear unto my prayer that goeth not out of faith leaves. That means it's not a liar. It's not a talkative. It's not feigning. And so it's always upright. In verse 7, show thy marvelous loving kindness. O thou as savers thy right hand, them which put trust in thee, from those that rise up against thee. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wing, from the wicked that oppress me, from my deadly enemies who compass me about this have been the prayer of David. And the same thing, the Lord expects you to pray. Chapter 18, in verse 4, the sorrows of death compass me, and the floods of ungodly men make me afraid. The sorrows of hell compass me about. The snares of death prevented me. In verse 6, in my distress, you see that? In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even unto his ears. The word of God is telling us, no matter what situation we find ourselves, when we pray unto the Lord, he will do what? He will answer. Chapter 18. I've read that in verse 23 of that same chapter. I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from thy iniquity. Chapter 19. In verse 3 and 12. There is no speech, no language, where their voice it's not her. That means whatever language you are and whatever language you can speak, there are no barriers in the sight of the Lord. He will always hear. All you need to do is just use whatever language you can, call upon the Lord, and he will answer you. In verse 12 of that same chapter, who can understand his errors? No man. And that's why David was inviting the Lord, cleanse thou me from strictly fall. And I know at the end of the day, his life was not the same thing again. Chapter 20, in verse 1, the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The Lord will hear you in the day of trouble. I didn't hear your amen. The name of God, of Joseph, Defend thee. The name of the Lord will always defend us. All we need to do is just to key into the plan of God and the purpose of the Lord, and the Lord will hear us. In verse 7, some cross in chariot and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. We will remember his name. Chapter 21. In verse 4, he said, he asked life of thee, and thou gavest it, even length of days. 
forever and ever. In verse 13, be thou exalted, and that's the Lord. Be thou exalted, Lord, in thy own strength. So, when we sing and praise thy power, you can see all that we have read. The psalmist, he understood God. He believed the Lord. And in the process, he was able to get everything from the Lord. David was a unique man. A unique man indeed. For he had spiritual grace to manage trials, torments, deprivation, troubles, and precarious situations in his life. How did he get it right? And how will you get it right? He depended solely on God for his intervention. And if you depend upon the Lord, you will get the intervention of the Lord. They will call. The contemporary believers must know that we are not insulated from persecution. They will come, but let us not fret. Only take them to the Lord in prayer with pure consciences. Ye and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall do what? Shall suffer persecution. We'll see that in 2 Timothy chapter 3 in verse 12. Three points where we go through. Number one, plea for deliverance from persecutors. Plea, that's prayer, for deliverance from persecutors. David was a man of prayer. And the question I want to ask you, are you a man of prayer? When you run into challenges, do you spend time to pray? You are supposed to pray. If you don't pray, the problem will remain there. David was a man of prayer because he knew the many challenges plaguing him, which were literally contending and contesting his very existence on earth here. He knew that. He recognized that. And he never shied away from me. Many of us will shy away from the challenges we are going through. And rather than face them squarely, we are literally avoiding them. Don't do that. David did not avoid them. Those, his persecutors, were prepared to truncate the very purpose of God in his life. Similarly, we must know that our persecutors do not want us to live happily on earth here and at last make heaven. Our persecutors, they know that we are on our way to heaven. They know that all the benefits God has provided for us we were keen to eat. Yet, they want to deny us. They want to debar us. But they will not do that for you and to me in Jesus' name. See how David prayed. How did he pray? In Psalm 17, in verse 1, he says, Preserve me, O God, for indeed do I put my trust. Psalm 16, in verse 1, Hear the right, O Lord, attend unto my cry, give unto my prayer that goeth not out of vain lips. That means he was not a double-minded individual. He was not a dubious individual. He was not an individual who will say one thing, and at the same time, he does another thing. His prayer was based on his relationship with God. Brother, sister, father, mother, children. What is your standing in the sight of God when you are praying? or asking anything from God. I don't know your standing. Are you a sinner right there? Are you a sinner? Or you are a righteous individual? You need to give your life to the Lord if you have not done that. Number one, 
Do you pray with a heart without sin? Is your heart pure? Is your heart right? Do you commune directly to God without any intermediary? Number three, do you pray with faith? Number four, though you are going through challenges, do you see holes on the Bible doctrines? Question, what can believers learn from the way the psalmist presented his plea for audience? I will answer the question from here. We learn that we must pray in all situations and conditions with penitent hearts, clear conscience, with faith, and keep holding on to the doctrines which we are convinced about. Do you believe when you are going through challenges, do you still hold on to the doctrines of the Lord? If not, you better come back. Otherwise, there may be challenges the more in your life. Question two, how should believers pray during persecution? And I'm asking you, how will believers pray? How are you as a believer praying when you face persecution? Once we are living the life of Christ, we should not pray as though we are hopeless. We are downcast. We are destabilized. In Psalm 16, verse 5 to 6, the Lord is the portion of my heritance and of my call. Thou maintainest my Lord. The lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a godly heritage. The Lord is telling you, because you are a child of God, you have godly heritage. Our godly heritage is far more than the earthly riches we can think about. Can you imagine that you, who was once upon a time a sinner, now converted, now sanctified, now baptized in the Holy Ghost, healed, Maybe you have a challenge and the Lord healed you. Doing exploits for the Lord. What's up to all this in the world? I don't know what is as much as this. You are converted, you are born again, you are sanctified, you are baptized. And when you are sick, you go to the Lord and you pray. Nothing, nothing can be compared with that. Please go on and enjoy your lovely life in Christ, and prepare for heaven. The Lord will prepare us for heaven in Jesus' name. Can I hear amen for that? Amen. Point number two. Praises for deliverance from persecutors. Brethren, if God delivered Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, from the onslaught of the king, the children of Israel, from Pharaoh, Peter, Paul, and Silas, David, whom we are studying today, I believe, I believe, can you say that? I believe God will deliver you from the fears of persecutors. I can assure you, by the grace of God, Whatever the challenge is, like David, a God the needed miracle, and he continued with the Lord. You will get the needed miracle in Jesus' name. Let it be known to you that your challenge is a foregone conclusion. In Psalm 18, in verse 4 and 6, the sorrows of death compass me, and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid in my distress, in your distress, in our distress or distresses. 
we called upon the Lord and cried unto my, unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even unto his ears. When you cry to the Lord, on the bed you cry, on the couch you cry, as you are standing up you cry, as you are walking on the road you are crying. The word of God says, it will answer you. And I know today it will answer us in Jesus' name. In Psalm 20, in verse 13, Be thou exalted, Lord, in thy own strength. So we will we sing and praise thy power. Psalm 18, in verse 49, Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the hidden and sing praises unto thy name. You can see, all these are reeled out by David, the man after the heart of God. Psalm 19 in verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showed his handiwork. David prayed, and his prayer received answers which led to testimonies in your life. When you pray, brother, when you pray, sister, when you pray, my children, the Lord is saying, he will answer you, just as David prayed. Never mind the threatenings of persecutors, the threatenings of affliction, the threatenings of diseases, the threatenings of the so-called incurable sicknesses, they must flee today. I believe God for you that today all those sicknesses, all those challenges, they will flee today in Jesus' name. But when the miracles happen, what happened? Give glory to God like David. David gave glory to God. He gave praises to God. He draws our attention to the fact that nature and heavenly bodies glorify God. How much more? When last did you sing in your room, brother, sister? When last did you sing in your house? My children, when last? When last did you clap your hands and give glory unto the Lord? Baby, a very long time. No wonder you are not getting the miracles. No wonder you are not getting the answers. You need to worship the Lord. You need to bless the Lord with everything that is within you, like David did. Like I said, when last did you sing in your room? When last did you sing in your house? When last did you clap your hands to worship God for his goodness? If not complain and complain and complain, stop complaining. Give glory to God. God loves praises, but he abhors frivolous praises, like using candles, like praising him with defied hearts, and in an indecent manner. Our praises must be Christ oriented, scripture based that will further propagate the gospel. Where do you stand today, my brother? Where do you stand, my sister? Where do you stand, my children? Where do you stand? As many that are hearing and watching, maybe online, question. Give some reasons, believers, to praise God at all times. We must praise God for his provision of redemption. He allowed Jesus to come. And when he came, he died for your sins. He died for my sins. He died for the sins of the entire world. And you still have the privilege. And the privilege is still available. And that's why we must praise the Lord for his provision of redemption, of our salvation, of our deliverance, 
of our preservation and protection and victory over our enemies. Whatever the challenge of the enemies in your life today, the Almighty God is telling you, He will set you free. And when He sets you free, you'll be free completely and totally indeed. And I pray that will be your portion in Jesus' name. I didn't hear your amen. Point number three. Prayers for the persecuted and testimonies of God's mercies. Purity of heart and prayer. We get testimonies and testimonies beget joy and happiness. What am I saying? When you are pure in heart, when you are purifying heart, when you are purified completely, totally, wholly, completely unto the Lord, you will pray, answers will come. And when answers come, then there will be testimonies. And when testimonies come, what will happen? There will be happiness, there will be joy. For them. Sometimes we are so engrossed in the aura of smooth ride Christianity. I said smooth ride Christianity. That means everything is working well. And you are so engrossed, and you know, you are so happy, you are so elated, and everything is going on well. Yes, that's good. Yes, that's okay. But nonetheless, what happened? In the process that we are consciously for God, those persecuted believers and distress in our midst. There are so many people in our midst, so many brothers, so many sisters, so many mommies, so many daddies, and they are going through distress. And here you are. You are happy every day. You are elated every day. Everything is going on well. And you couldn't care that somebody somewhere, a brother somewhere, a married man somewhere, a married woman somewhere, a student somewhere, is going through challenges in our midst. It should not be so, and it must not be so. We must be our brother's keeper. We are told, or it is said, and I quote, What goes around comes around. What goes around comes around. Today, it may be smooth with us. Or with you. But we know not tomorrow. Hence, Paul said, and I quote Hebrews chapter 13 in verse 3. He says, Remember there that I am born as bounded with them. He said, Don't neglect them. Look around for them. They're in your neighborhood. They are your churches. They are your house fellowship. They are your streets. He says, as though they are bound, and you should be bound with them. And there, we suffer adversity. Maybe some are sick. They need help. Maybe some are hungry. They need food. Maybe have no, some have no clothes. They needed clothes. What can you do, brother? What can you do, sister? What can you do as a family so that you can put smile on the faces of these people, of these brethren? You don't need to neglect them. Remember them that I am born as bound with them and them which suffer adversity as being yourself also in the body. In Psalm 20, in verse 1 and verse 7, the Lord 
hear thee. In the day of trouble, the Lord will hear us. I said the Lord will hear us. And he will hear us today in Jesus' name. That's what he's telling us. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Can I hear amen for that? Amen. Some trust in chariot and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. My brother, my sister, you need to remember the name of the Lord. Are you sick? Remember the name of the Lord. Are you in affliction? Remember the name of the Lord. Are there challenges there? Remember the name of the Lord. Are your children having challenges? Remember the name of the Lord. Are you having a problem you cannot share with anybody? Remember the name of the Lord. And as you remember the name of the Lord, God will answer you. He will answer you today in Jesus' name. David had prayed. David had prayed. And you must pray. And you must pray. You cannot be going here and there, running from mountain to valley, from here to there, and you are having challenges, and you are not praying. You need to pray. And that's what the Word of God tells us. David had prayed. He received answers to his prayers, including many testimonies. And you can receive many testimonies today. In spite of his answers, he prayed for others. Are you praying for others? He was a priest and a shepherd who was concerned about his flock. Are you concerned about the flock as a pastor? As a pastor, as a minister, as a leader? Are you concerned about the flock? Ministers today must make it a lifestyle to pray for members. Take time and pray. Maybe you have not been praying before. This is the time to pray for them. On the other hand, members and congregation must also pray for their pastor and pastors because communication is a two-way trial. It's not one way. Yes, my pastor, you didn't pray for me. Eh, my pastor, I didn't see you. Have you also gone to see your pastor? Have you also gone to check on your pastor? Have you also spent time to pray for your pastor? Finally, he reminded his audience that believers trust the Lord, not in chariots. Are there idols there? Maybe you are falling sick. Or maybe you have a challenge. And the next thing for you is that I prayed and prayed and prayed. I need to go and seek in the chariot's places. No, don't do that. If you do that, you're on your way out of the kingdom. And God wants you to remain in the kingdom. There is no power. There is no problem that the Lord cannot solve for us. And that's what you need to know. No God or man is above the God of heaven. So we must appreciate, we must reverence and honor the Almighty God. Anyone trusting chariots, idols, or man, or men, and not known the Lord, or had backsliding, are you in that condition? Check off your Christian faith. How is it now? How was it 10 years back? How was it 5 years back? How was it 6 years back? How was it even last year? Today, let me ask you. Are you really standing? Or you have gone away from the Lord? We are only seeing the carcass of your spiritual life. But the Lord is telling you, come over. Like David, David came over with all the years Saul was pursuing him up and down. 
He was always communing with the Almighty God, and the Lord was always there. And that's why he had testimonies to tell. Such will need to repent if you have gone away from the Lord and get restored to avoid damnation in hell. You must not go to hell. None of us in the church, a church like this, where we have the undiluted word of God, none of us, the back door to backsliding by the grace of God, God will shut it, God will block it, God will lock it, and nobody will go out from the back door in Jesus' name. Amen. Question. Please some of the testimonies of King David in the concluding parts of the text. Psalm 21, in verse 13. Be thou exalted, be thou exalted, Lord, in thy strength. So we will sing and praise thy power. And that's a challenge to all of us today. The Lord wants us to exalt the name of the Lord. You see nature, the moon, the stars, the ocean, the trees, the plants, the animals. They are praising the Lord. How much more? You said you have a living soul. And you are a replica of the Almighty God. Why will you not praise the Lord? Why will you not exalt the Lord? As for me, I will exalt the Lord. How about you? By the grace of God, you will exalt the Lord in Jesus' name. In conclusion, we have learned about the, the persecutors and the persecuted. It is heartwarming that no matter the extent of our persecution, we have Christ always. Do you have him always? Brother, sister, children, students, do you always have Christ always? Are you sure Christ is always with you? And when you call upon him, he answers. David had him always. And that's why we are studying him today. In conclusion, we have learned about the persecutors and the persecuted. It is heartwarming that no matter the extent of our persecution, we have Christ always who will succor us. And as we always, and we will always be victorious. Let's hold on to him. Let's hold on to him. Are you holding on him? Are you keeping tab on him? Or is he leaving you behind? Let us hold on to him until the end. The Lord has spoken to us today. Where do you stand? What's your decision? Are you going to be like David? Or you are going to be like Saul? Saul had opportunity to be one of the greatest kings. Unfortunately, he messed up his life because he decided to go out by the back door. You will not go out by the back door. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord. Close your eyes and pray. Are you persecuted? Know that if you are truly a believer, the Lord is going to take care of you. Are there persecutors in your place of work, in your compound? Or you have a boss. He's always persecuting you because he knows you are converted. He knows you will not falsify account. He knows you will not get to bed with him because you are his sister and you are maintaining your stance. 
Never mind. The Lord is on the throne. He will take care of you. All those persecutors, he will silence them. And then you will enjoy your Christian life. All you need to do is just to praise the name of the Lord. And believe the Lord. Are you going through trials at this time? And it's like you are between life and death. Like David. But you know, the miracle came in his life. And so thought David will not be a king. But the Lord had already established that. That which is established concerning your life, the devil cannot usurp it. He cannot. He will not. He will never pray and talk to the Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you because you have made us to see today that the grace of God is always available. And we are trusting you. And we are believing you like David trusted you. Like Daniel trusted you. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they trusted you. Like Paul and Silas, they trusted you. And you deliver them. You will deliver your children today and there will be a miracle of testimony in their life in Jesus' name. We bless you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank you. God bless you.